Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup from People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. In today's headlines, Brazilian Senate Committee recommends criminal charges against Jair Bolsonaro. Countries warn of rise in forced displacement induced by climate change. US court denies bail petition of environmental lawyer Steven Donziger. And Turkey's parliament approves extension of troop deployments in Iraq and Syria. In our first story, a Senate Commission of Inquiry has backed criminal charges against Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro. Seven out of the panel's 11 members approved its final 1,300-page report on October 26th. It calls for Bolsonaro to be indicted on nine counts over his mishandling of the pandemic. The charges include crimes against humanity, incitement to crime, and the violation of social rights. Bolsonaro is also accused of falsification of documents and infringement of preventive sanitary measures. The report has also recommended charges against 77 other people and two companies. Among them is the governor of the Amazonas state, Wilson Lima. Over a hundred deaths due to asphyxia were reported in the capital of Manaus in January due to a lack of oxygen supply. The government admitted later that it had known about the shortage eight days before the crisis hit. A previous draft of the committee's report had also accused Bolsonaro of genocide and mass homicide. These were linked to the disproportionate impact of the pandemic on indigenous people, which resulted in over 60,000 cases. Despite knowing that these communities were more vulnerable, there was a serious lack of medical care. Meanwhile, between February 2020 and July 2021, over 600,000 chloroquine pills were distributed in the Amazon without any evidence of their efficacy. Despite this, the charge of genocide was left out of the committee's final report. The document was submitted to the Prosecutor General on October 27th. However, criminal charges seem unlikely given that he is a Bolsonaro appointee. In our next story, Barbados has warned that climate crisis could lead to mass force displacement in the Caribbean. The United Nations and the Center for Climate Change of the Caribbean community have already stated that a rise of one meter in the sea level will displace 110,000 people. A 2018 World Bank report stated that climate change could force 145 million people to flee their homes by 2050. 86 million could be displaced in sub-Saharan Africa, 40 million in South Asia, and 17 million in Latin America. Refugee organization documented 30 million new displacement in 2020 due to floods, wildfires, or storms. The United Nations has warned that the Earth is on track for a catastrophic average temperature rise of 2.7 degrees Celsius by the end of the century. A further rise in temperatures will lead to severe climate events, including forest fires, floods, and superstorms. A recent study has documented the impact of such extreme weather events in India. Around 70% of respondents across 1,000 households in three states migrated immediately after natural disasters. The survey was conducted by the International Institute for Environment and Development. Over 70% of the people stated that droughts had become more frequent in recent years. A 2020 assessment report placed the country on track for a 4.4 degree Celsius temperature rise by 2100. In our next story, a United States appellate court has denied a request for bail filed by human rights lawyer Stephen Donziger. He will be required to report to prison on October 27th. District Judge Loretta Preska sentenced him to six months in prison on criminal contempt charges on October the 1st. Don Ziger's lawyers filed for a stay order while a substantial appeal against the decision was being heard. However, this appeal was denied by three federal judges on Tuesday. Don Ziger was part of a team which won a pollution case against Chevron in 2011. The corporation acquired Texaco, which was responsible for dumping over 70 billion liters of oil and toxic waste in the Ecuadorian Amazon. Over 1,700 square miles of land were destroyed and local indigenous communities were decimated. Chevron has been able to evade paying $9.5 billion in compensation. Meanwhile, it filed a case against Steven Donziger in the United States. 
when he refused to turn over his electronic devices, he was charged with contempt in 2019. Not only did the judges in this case have ties to Chevron, but a private Chevron link firm was hired to prosecute Donziger. He has already spent over 800 days under house arrest. In September, the United Nations Working Group on Arbitrary Detention called for his immediate release. The panel of jurists concluded that Donziger's detention had violated international law. They also noted the staggering lack of objectivity and impartiality displayed by the judges. In our final story, we go to Turkey, where Parliament has extended troop deployments in Iraq and Syria. Similar motions have been approved over the years, citing threats from ISIS and Kurdish groups. Tuesday's motion also contained provisions for foreign troops to launch operations in Iraq and Syria from within Turkey. It also argued that peace under the Astana process had not yet been achieved. The 2017 agreement, Turkey, Russia and Iran called for a ceasefire in Syria. It also urged a political resolution of the war as per the United Nations Security Council Resolution 2254. Turkey has carried out airstrikes and land incursions in northern Iraq and Syria since 2013. It has attacked areas controlled by the Syrian Democratic Forces, claiming that they are led by the People's Protection Units. Turkey claimed that these units are affiliated with the banned Kurdish Workers' Party. Its attacks in northern Iraq are also related to alleged activities of the party in the area. Turkey waged a war against Kurdish militias in 2019, claiming it was to create a buffer zone between its border and the SDF. Turkey's attacks in Syria have been widely denounced, with Turkish Communist Party calling its presence in the country a permanent occupation. That's all we have for today's episode. Please visit our website for more details and stories. Also follow us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. Thank you.